friends, happy Sunday. Man, I'm so thirsty. Whew. Even if I drink water, I'll still be thirsty again. Well, did you know that Jesus is the living water? Whoever drinks from him will never thirst again. Huh? Well, it says in John 4, 13, everyone who drinks from this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I give him will never be thirsty. The water that I give to him will become in him a spring, a spring of water welling up into eternal life. Man, I want that kind of water. Where can I get it? Again, if you believe in Jesus, you have this living water welling up inside your heart. Now, for today's worship, I hope that you pray for Jesus to well up our heart with this living water. Are you ready? Let's go! I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi friends, my name is Pastor Diana and boy do I have an exciting story for you. Well as you know, we're going to need Bible Boy for this one, so Bible Boy! Hi, I'm Bible Boy and I'm going to read the Bible verse for you guys today. Daniel 5 verses 4 through 6. As they drank the wine, they praised the God of gold and silver, and of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall, near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and his legs were so frightened that his legs became weak, and his knees were knocking. Daniel 5, verses 4 through 6. Wow, Bible Boy, thank you so much for reading today's message. And now last night, friends, I stayed up thinking about a few stories in the Bible. I was thinking about how God is a God filled with so many miracles and He does great wonders. For instance, Sarah had a baby at 95. That's pretty impossible. And He also led the Israelites to split the Red Sea. He sent 10 plagues. He made bread and meat come from the sky. A donkey could talk. The Jordan River dried up so that the Israelites can cross it. The wall of Jericho fell down. The sun stood still. Gideon's army defeated thousands of strong army with just 300. And now, remember all the miracles that he did with Elijah? Remember what happened at Mount Carmel? And now, friends, we are at Daniel. I wonder what this story is about. Is it the lion one? No. Is it the fiery furnace one? Well, that is a good one. Well, no. It's going to be a little different, and we're going to see how it goes. Daniel had lived in Babylon for many, many years. He was an old man by then. You see, all of Daniel's life, Daniel tried to do exactly what God wanted. And so King Nebuchadnezzar really liked Daniel. Daniel was one of the best servants that King Nebuchadnezzar ever had. And one time, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that really upset him. He stayed up at night worrying about the dream. The king called all of the magicians in his court to come and tell him what the dream meant. Tell us the dream, the magician said, and we'll tell you what it means. But friends, the king would not tell anyone what he dreamt. He wanted to see if the magicians could tell him what the dream was. If the magicians could tell him, then their power would be proved real. When the king saw that none of the magicians could tell him about the dream, he ordered that all of the wise men in Babylon be put to death. 
Now Daniel was one of the king's wise men. He told the king that he couldn't tell him the dream. He would not tell the dream through magic. He would tell it through God's power. And so Daniel told the king that the dream was about a statue. The statue's head was of pure gold, its chest and arm of silver, its bellies and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, and its feet partially of iron and partially of baked clay. And while you were watching, well, a huge stone rolled down and crushed the feet and the statue crumbled and fell. Yes, that's exactly, said the king. Daniel told the king what the dream meant. The part that the statue's body represented, the king of Babylon and the kingdom that will come after it. Well, someday there will be another kingdom, he said kingdom of God, that we should be stronger than all of the other kingdoms. The kingdoms of this earth will come to an end, but the kingdom of God will last forever. And now when King Nebuchadnezzar heard this, he knew that what Daniel said was true because Daniel knew what the dream was and he knew what it meant. And another time, King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed about a tree that was as tall as the sky. It was so big, it could be seen from every place on earth. All kinds of animals lived under it. And in the dream, he was told to cut it down. And Daniel told the meaning of the dream. You see, the tree represented King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar will be cut down like the tree and be made humble. He will eat grass in the field like animals for seven years until he admitted that the Lord was the only true God. And the dream came true. And after seven years, King Nebuchadnezzar admitted that the Lord was the only God. And now friends, many years passed and King Nebuchadnezzar died. And now there was a new king. And now this king was the only one who was acting like the king of Babylon. Three kings ruled in Babylon during Daniel's time. And you see, this king gave a huge big banquet for thousands of his nobles. And everyone at this banquet ate and drank a lot of alcohol and they got drunk. You see, this king wanted to impress all of his guests. He knew that there was some gold and silver that were in the storage. And now there were cups that had been stolen from the old temple of God in Jerusalem. Now this very bad king, he did not care that they were special cups that were only made used in God's temple. He ordered the servants to bring the cups so that his guests could use them and drink more alcohol. And now when everyone began drinking out of God's special cup, a giant hand appeared out of nowhere. It started to write on the walls of the room. And the words were, Mel, Tiki, and Parson. And none of the king's wise men knew what the words meant. The king was very frightened he really wanted to know what the words meant. And finally, the queen said that they should ask Daniel what it meant, since Daniel knows everything, right? And by this time, Daniel was an old man. He used to interpret dreams for King Nebuchadnezzar. But for this new king, will Daniel do it? Well, we'll see. Daniel was brought before this king, and Daniel probably saw God's special cup being used to drink from. These people did not obey God and they certainly did not respect God. And the king offered him a lot of money. But Daniel said he did not want this money. He told the king that the writings meant, well, your days are numbered. You will not be king long. Yes, the writing on the wall, it meant that you will have been weighed on God's scale and you are not good enough. And it meant that your kingdom is divided and another kingdom will take away your kingdom. And now this king knew that what Daniel said was true. And that very night, an army came and took over the kingdom of Babylon. And now the Persians were rulers of the land. You see, friend, in today's story, we saw the huge 
a big, powerful magic trick done by God. A hand appeared out of nowhere because this king was disrespecting God, and it started to write on the walls. Friends, what would you think if you suddenly saw a hand appear out of nowhere and it started writing on the walls? Well, this writing on the wall told the king, you are not good king, and therefore another nation will come and take over Babylon, which very much, friends, it did that very, very night. Friends, as we see all the miracles and power of God, I pray you guys will always remember that what? He is a God that reigns. He is a God that lives. And He's watching over all His people. And He wants to make sure that we only worship Him and respect Him, not like the Babylonians. You see, God always wins. You see, this king thought he was the best king in the world, but we know our God is the best king. So I pray my friends at home will always worship our God who lives and reigns. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your precious word today. We saw a really great miracle. You did many in the Bible, a donkey can talk, and so many other miracles. But in today's story, you allowed a huge hand to write on the wall. I'm sure the king was very afraid and even scared. I would be scared. But God, this is the power that you have. You can do all things to show your people how wonderful and great you are. So help us to always trust in you and believe in you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey friends, imagine you were in a room and a huge hand just came out and started writing on the wall. Pretty creepy. But in today's story, it was pretty awesome because our God is powerful. He is in control of the moon, the sun, the stars, and everything in this world. Amen? Bye guys! Many years passed, and Daniel, now an older man, was still in service to the kingdom of Babylon, when a new king, Belshazzar, came into power. King Belshazzar decided to host a great banquet for thousands of his leaders. During the feast, King Belshazzar had his servants bring out the gold and silver goblets that his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. As the king and his nobles drank from these sacred goblets, they praised false gods. Suddenly, a human hand appeared, and one finger began to write on the wall right in front of everyone at the feast. As King Belshazzar watched, he began to shake in fear. The king called for his wise men and said, whoever reads this writing and tells me what it means, I will give them riches and power. But the wise men could not read the writing or tell the king what it meant. This made the king even more terrified. Hearing the commotion, the queen came into the banquet hall and said, Don't be alarmed. There is a man who can help you. He was trusted by King Nebuchadnezzar because of his great insight and wisdom. So much so that Nebuchadnezzar put him in charge of all of Babylon's wise men. His name is Daniel, and if you bring him here, he will be able to tell you what this writing means. When Daniel appeared before King Belshazzar, the king told him, None of my wise men can read the writing on the wall and tell me what it means. But if you can, I will give you riches and honor beyond your wildest dreams. 
Daniel answered the king. You can keep your gifts and give them to someone else, but I will still read the writing for you and tell you what it means. Daniel told King Belshazzar, God gave your predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar, absolute power, glory, and splendor. Because of this, all the nations of the earth feared him. He did as he pleased to help or hurt anyone he chose. But Nebuchadnezzar became proud and arrogant, so God stripped him of his throne and his power. Only after this did King Nebuchadnezzar acknowledge that God alone is king over all the earth. But you, King Belshazzar, Daniel continued, have not humbled yourself, even though you knew all of this. Instead, you have become proud and honored yourself above God. When you brought out the goblets from God's temple, you drank from them and praised false gods who cannot see or hear or understand. In all of this, you did not honor God or his hand in your life. Because of this, God sent the hand and wrote the inscription. My king, Daniel said, this the inscription says, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parson. Mene means numbered. God has numbered your days and brought them to an end. Tekel means weighed. You have been weighed on the scales and you have been found wanting. Parson means divided. Your kingdom is divided and will be given to the Medes and Persians. Just as the king had promised, Daniel was dressed in wealth. That very night, King Belshazzar was killed and his kingdom was given over to another ruler.
Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi.